Hey guys, so this is the big moment coming for all of Power Rangers in a lot of different ways. And I was really scared about this episode, not just because it's the ending of Power Rangers again, whether this sticks as the actual ending, who knows? I was really worried about it. Zordon has to stay dead. It would also be against what this season was going for, because remember I always said, that Power Rangers always had a problem with consequences. Ha ha ha, here Kendrick came back to life. And it would be a complete 180 of what this season was trying to do with like examples of Javi. And on top of it, when Once It Always was announced and they told us the plot about its story is that, oh, Rita Repulsa wants to go back in time. So I thought, oh, maybe that's how Zordon's gonna come back. The current MMPR team is gonna talk to Zordon that was in 1993 so we'll get his cameo that way and that will be a way to avoid it but they didn't do that so i was worried again like where are they going to go with this zordon moment because it's going to happen for what they did it was an interesting way to bring him back but also keep him dead when andros destroyed his energy tube zordon turned into this out of energy and we didn't know where it went we find out in cosmic fury that zordon ended up in the morphing grid and when aeon entered the grid to find where zato went zordon took zato's form although it wasn't totally clear on what they were going for i'm assuming what they set up in here was that when zordon died in countdown to destruction his energy was released and went into the grid but he stayed dormant until this point and when he woke up right here at this moment, he was confused. And that's the reason why he was talking to Aeon the way he was. So that's what I'm getting at. And it also kind of loosely explains, oh, the Morphin Grid can look to different people. If Zordon visually looks like Zato. So basically, whatever's in the grid, it doesn't really have a physical concept that humans or people can you know discerniate so it simply visually changes to something that you do know so that is really as far as i'm going to go as compliments to this final episode now don't get me wrong the big you know conundrum of you know zed is going to be blown up released out of the captivator and doing the inverse of zordon's wave the evil wave uh, that's a big story that's a big plot point and i do love that they did bring back a lot of the old megazords of course you had to have two wreaths in season ones although i would have not picked anything from ninja steel uh they did pick good choices galaxy megazord has been dealt with in space many a times and the astro megazord mark ii and a lot of detail went into those cg models uh you know the astro megazord had a lot of its screw holes and connectors set from the toy version and the cg megazord looked much better compared to once and always it was less reflective this time around so you can actually see more details that actually i missed in once and always overall those bits are fine even mucus and slither them willing to sacrifice themselves from rescuing the rangers turning good and whatnot and teleporting into space and thank god for space having air they actually finally used that as an advantage in the series for once but the ending of this story is bad on multiple fronts. Let's start off with Vigilia. Now everyone knows I don't like Vigilia because she had no time to be developed. You, you can't really be a villain in a Power Ranger season if you don't get a lot of screen time. That's the reason why I didn't like any of the Megaforce films because there were three main generals, bosses, whatever you want to call them, and they didn't get a lot of time. So I didn't really care about any of the three of them. Remember the days of Lothor? Yeah, he's goofy and dumb, but we had that twist. He was the brother of Sensei and all that time travel shenanigans. And in the final episode, not only did Lothor steal Cam's amulet, using it in order to steal the ranger's powers, he brought back all his minions, they destroyed the battleizer. It was a worthy ending to Ninja Storm's story and it wrapped up a lot of things and it still left a few threads over here and there to bring up in the team up special. Not only does Bajillia get no development, she's supposed to be the main baddie of the season and she gets no actual final fight because there was no time to. And then you have a two or three minute you know, wire work fight of the Rangers with her. And all for really what? The most anticlimactic ending Power Rangers has ever had. Now the universe is gonna end for them to actually, you know, stop Lord Zed from doing this, enter the tube and basically talked Zed out of the power so that the evil wave doesn't happen. I don't mind anticlimactic type of endings if it makes 
sense. You can do a lot of things in previous episodes. And then if you want to have like a quota episode, you can do it if they're worthy of that. The problem is the writers were on a different page. I have two major problems with this decision they did with Zed. Zed would not be on my list of villains being redeemable. Now I could see a Clipter having this type of story. His heart was touched by Caron. So there was that element of him turning to the good side, not Lord Zed, and especially not Lord Zed after what has happened in Cosmic Fury on top of what everything he did in season two, three, and Zeo. Let's list everything that Zed has done. Let's see, he's captured the Morphing Masters, perverted their energies, absorbed into his own body, creating Master Zed. Captured Eltar, probably killed thousands of Eltarians, I guess. Went on various other planets and took them over because of Adver Spite, either past failures of villains, other places that he's hated. We don't know what was been going on over the time the Rangers have been missing. He's captured and created that force field around Earth, imprisoned countless millions of people in internment camps. Not to mention, let's see, destroyed uh, Ranger powers two times in a row, blew up the command center. If we want to count the movie, he he brought, you know, ooze back to life. And let's not forget the around 100 monsters that he put on Earth to try to kill the rangers and people around him over the time. And not to mention killing Mondo at the end of Zeo. Now, if this season was much longer and you set this journey up in the beginning of the show, you know, this would actually make more sense. Imagine if the season was 40 episodes and sometime around episode 20, uh, they were able to convince Lord Zed to turn good in another circumstance and Bajilia became the actual main baddie for the remainder of the season where you build that character up. I can then buy it if you do it in the right way in the right circumstances but what happened in the actual season no there's no way for me to be convinced otherwise hell even diabolical would be higher on the list of redemption for him just killing queen banshee over lord zed it just does not work and it's fairly ridiculous especially when we just had once and always where rita got killed no problem in that story basically everything that happened to her in that story is what lord zed should have had he had to do a huge enough redemption arc basically the size of what ken went through in digimon season two it had to be that long and you had to make the character that endearing where you're like you know what all right it's jarring from all directions and it just made zed a puppet again which is what his main problem was rita used him brainwashed him to marry her you know and he was never serious again king mondo and queen machina didn't give a crap about him made fun of him and then bajillia belittles him you know turning him into a pawn and she was the one who was calling the shots all along and then at the end of the day the rangers turn him good and it's not really even an interesting ending because they just kind of pull what they did with Frieza. Oh, he goes on this magical world and he relives his nightmare. And I'm, I'm, I'm saying to myself, wait a minute, Rita bossing him around is his personal nightmare? I mean, it's a cute reference to MMPR, but I would have thought, you know, his nightmare would be, you know, losing to the Rangers over and over again. That feels more like his character. It this above all the episodes it needed to be two parts there was just no way that you could have told the story in any meaningful way and they didn't because bajilli was useless lord zed had this anti-climatic you know ending that made no sense the rangers did not have any worthy fight whatsoever to count as a final ending there have been amazing final fights and even some that are focused specifically on an emotional aspect because you can't just say, oh, you didn't like it because uh, it wasn't just, you know, a, you know, a slug fest uh, and re weapons and zords and fights and explosions. No, because this happened in Time Force 2. Time Force had a three-part finale where Rancic handed himself in. That's an anti climatic ending that worked. You know why? Because Nadira was built up where she was evil, but then she started doubting herself. And then what happened with Rancic with Frax? That's what turned her. It made perfect sense to have that type of ending. While at the same time, it was also to save history. There were multiple plot points that they had to resolve in the final for Time Force. 
Every which way you look at it, Ollie being evil had great potential, wasted. Fern, new ranger, new color, nothing. No one cared about her at all whatsoever. Basically, she was just here, they filled her in, boom, done. And even the ending, they had that really, you know, cool song. Javi finally got able to, you know, play his music. I liked it, I thought it was cool. It kind of reminded me of Dino Thunder's ending. It was a good way to wrap up that portion of the story. Billy did find out that Zordon was in the morphing grid and there was still hope for him. But because there was so much stuff going on in the story, everything was bogged down, which cannibalized everything. So nothing felt very satisfying. We have all the pop-up cameos and uh, Mucus and Slyther survived. I'm like, okay, that's cool and fine and whatever. The only positive I can give is, you know, the way they handled Zordon. No, actually, correction. There is another story that actually worked well. Dato's fate. Even though, you know, I had a whole bunch of issues of the way they handled him, him ending up as a morphing master, I thought that was a good way to end his story. The one thing I cannot forgive the writers that they chose to do was Lord Sad. At the beginning of the season, I was like, oh my God, they finally understand what the fans hated back in season two and three of MMPR when they made Zed look like an idiot. They just repeated history once again. Because of this very bizarre and out of character choice that they gave Zed, I wish they had, didn't bring him back and they should have just simply focused on Bajillia or the Q Ranger villains. As for an ending of the franchise as a whole, no matter what, I don't think anything would really be, you know, satisfactory to that because ultimately this is an ending of a franchise. Even when the show was initially canceled with RPM, RPM had a really great ending, although kind of repeated from In Space's ending, but it was not a satisfactory ending to Power Rangers. So I was sad when the show went. And this one, Cosmic Fury and the Morphing Masters were saved. That was all restored. It was not a good ending. And for this being potentially the final time, you know, this original continuity will be on screen. It was a very disappointing ending. I, I kind of understand it from the writer's perspective. Obviously, they do care and they do want to make a good Power Ranger season. I think if they had scaled it back to a bare minimum of, you know, you want to do original material and you don't want to follow the Kyu Ranger stuff, fine. But it would have been better off if they had just removed Zed completely and just simply went with your own thing in Cosmic Fury and have their story end. Because I would have rather had an original story in Cosmic Fury that didn't really have the baggage of old characters coming back. This is a tough one to rate because like I said, I got really frustrated with the choices they picked and I didn't think I would go below any more than a four, but this one's going to get a three out of 10 solely because of what they did with Zed. And do you really wanna see Lord Zed turn good? He should have been killed off in a spectacular final fight by the Cosmic Fury Rangers. Cosmic Fury was a good experiment and I would have loved to see more of this. I would like Super Sentai to always be a part of Power Rangers. It's element, it's soulmate basically. Power Rangers does feel strange when you don't use any of the Japanese material. So I would have loved to have seen more seasons go in this direction, but since we're going into this whole reboot direction, I don't know what will happen in the future. I really don't want to comment on it right now of how I feel because we really don't know anything about it. Will it work? Will it fail? Who knows? I'll judge it based on when we finally get to see it. I will say one thing. If you watch Cosmic Fury all in one go, three hours, it does mask a lot of the issues that the story has. It's more structured in a long three hour movie versus being 10 episodes. So even though I have all these problems with Cosmic Fury, I still want to thank everyone who worked on the series. I wish you got more of a chance to expand on this. And I will say that the writers, you know, did improve because we went from samurai to this. I just wish they were able to improve more in the story.